Hey everybody, Rick Lawson here. Since we can't meet in person again because of the dangers of COVID, uh, I thought maybe I would do another devotional for us that I could post online and maybe you can study tonight or uh, some other time as you have the opportunity. Uh, I've been thinking a little bit lately about how can we know for sure that the Bible we have is reliable? How can we know that this is a message that came from God? And what exactly uh, is that process of transmission that God used to make sure that his will got to us in a way that we could understand so that we could study it, learn it, put it into practice in our lives and do the things that he wants us to do. And so I, I prepared a lesson that I call the transmission chain of truth. Uh, it starts with God and it ends with us. But we have to really understand the steps of the, the process, the links in the chain that get the truth from God to us, lest we understand, misunderstand how God works today. In other words, God doesn't speak to us directly in, the, in uh, you know, small, still voices in the night or dreams or visions or some other miraculous means. God set forth a, a certain chain to get the truth to us. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about as we study for just a few minutes right now. First of all, we need to understand that all truth originates with God the Father. You know, the Bible teaches us this in lots of different ways. Uh, I remember what Jesus said when he was praying to the Heavenly Father in John chapter 17, when he was talking about the apostles, and he said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And so Jesus knew then where the truth originated. It originated with God the Father. God's will is recorded for us, and it originated from God the Father. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. The Bible tells us all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The important thing for our study about that passage is the idea that all scripture is inspired of God. That word there, inspired, literally means God breathed. And so the truth that we have in the scripture did not originate in the mind of man. It originated in the mind of God. And God breathed it out for us so that we could have it. But the chain of the truth starts in heaven with the Heavenly Father. God is the author of all truth. Now, God sent his Son to reveal that truth to mankind. Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse number 38, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And so Jesus said very clearly during his personal ministry here while he was in the flesh that he came to do the will of God to deliver the message of God so that people could know the things that God wanted them to know in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 the Hebrews writer tells us God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets so in that first verse there he's talking about how God used to speak to people during the Old Testament times. In the Old Testament times, God delivered his message through prophets. But that's no longer the case today because the very next verse says, hath in these last days spoken unto us, notice, by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And so, God used to speak through prophets. He used to speak through angels. He used to speak through miraculous means in Old Testament times directly from, from God. But today he speaks to us through his son. And so, so far the links in the chain that we have to get truth down to us starts with the father and then it comes through the son. But of course, Jesus is not speaking directly today to us as well. 
And so the question is, where? what's the next link in the chain for the truth that God wants us to know? Well, why don't we listen to what Jesus says? Jesus says in John 14, in verse number 26, when he was speaking to his disciples, he said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And so Jesus knew that there was going to be a time that he was going to be leaving. He was going to die and be resurrected and then ascend back into heaven. And those closest to him had been with him for three years. And he had been teaching them and preparing them for the work that they had to do. But he knew that they couldn't remember everything that he had said to them uh, over those three years. And so he said, listen, after I'm gone... I'll send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, back to you so that he can remind you of all the things that I've told you and guide you into all truth. John 15, verse number 26, the very next chapter. Jesus said unto them, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And so... Jesus knew that the work of the Holy Spirit was going to be to come to the apostles and other inspired men and testify about Jesus, his message, his will, his word that he received from the Father for us. And so the Holy Spirit then worked to deliver the message of God to mankind. So the links in the chain then start out with the Godhead. God the Father at the top. God the Son who came to this world and sacrificed himself for us, ascended back into heaven and then sent the Holy Spirit to the uh, apostles and other inspired writers of the Bible so that they could write that message down. We know that's the case because in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 21, the Bible says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, when Peter wrote that passage, he was talking specifically in the context about the Old Testament. But it's true for New Testament writers as well. God chose human penmen to write down his message. And to make sure that they got it absolutely correct, he inspired them or moved them by the Holy Spirit. That word move there means to be born along. Like when you drop a leaf, uh, you, you're standing out on a, uh, by the river and a leaf drops into the water and that river carries that leaf by you. Well, that's how the inspired writers were born along by the Holy Spirit. They didn't sit down and think of good things to write down. They were moved by the Holy Spirit to write down the message that he gave them to write, which came through Jesus from the Father. And so the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to the inspired writers and apostles of the first century. Paul thought that that was very under important for his readers to understand, that he wasn't just writing down, uh, you know, instructions or laws to live by that he thought were wise. As a matter of fact, when he was attacked and his apostleship came under fire in places like the city of Corinth, he would write first Corinth, the first Corinthian letter back to that church there. And in chapter 14 and verse number 37, he, here's what he wrote. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. And so what was he saying? He's saying, this isn't my message. This is God's message. I received it from the Holy Spirit who passed, it, uh, who passed down, uh, who that truth was passed down from Jesus, who got it from the Father. And so that unbroken chain from the Father to the Son to the Holy Spirit to the inspired writers of the Bible. And Paul says, the things that I am writing to you are the commandments of the Lord. And that's not just true for, true for Paul. That's true for all the inspired writers of the Bible. And so uh, we can't afford to reject anything that is written. All of it came from God. 
And then Paul also wanted to, us to understand, along with the other inspired writers, that in order for us to benefit from the work that they did, writing down God's message as they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, we had to read and study it for ourselves. There are some people that think that uh, somehow the Bible is too hard to understand or it's written in some kind of secret code that we can't decipher. But that's not what Paul thought. One of the original writers, here's what he said in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. He said, How by revelation he, that is the Holy Spirit, made known unto me the mystery. And so a mystery is something that was once hidden, but it is then revealed. And so Paul said, these things, these secret things were revealed to me, and I wrote them down. He said, as I wrote afore in a few words. And then verse 4, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. You know, I'm not sure how much information Paul knew that he didn't write down, but I know he said this. If you read what I wrote, you know all the knowledge that I know about the mystery of Christ. And so Paul wanted us to know the truth. And so what did he do? He wrote down what the Holy Spirit told him to write down. And then when we read it, we can understand it and put it into practice. This reminds me of the passage in 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 15 where God says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so what do we have to do? We have to study it for ourselves. Study what? Opinions and doctrines of men and philosophies of the world? No, we have to study the word of God that was written by the apostles who were inspired by the Holy Spirit, who were sent by Jesus, who received the message from the Father. You see that unbroken chain? Because of that unbroken chain of transmission of the truth of the gospel, we can know that what we have in this book is right. You know, it's another study to talk about what happened after the Bible was written. You know, the, the copies that were made of the original manuscripts and circulated, they weren't inspired. But there were so many copies that were checked against one another in ancient times and even up through modern times that we can be sure that what we have here is not controversial. It didn't come from the mind of man. It came from the mind of God. And it's right. Whatever God says is right and true and needed by us. You see, God didn't make any mistakes. He didn't accidentally record things in this book that we don't need. We need everything in here. Now, of course, we don't live by the Old Testament today, but the Old Testament's important for our learning, according to Romans 15 and verse number 4, for whatsoever things are written aforetime are written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. We don't live under the Old Testament system, but we need to be studying the Old Testament system because of what it teaches us about God and what it teaches us about man, what it teaches us about sin and so forth. But today the law that we live under is the law of Christ revealed to us in the New Testament. And it came right from the Father through Jesus to the Holy Spirit to the inspired writers who wrote it down and then God, through his providence, preserved it for us to read and study so that we can be what God wants us to be. Isn't that a great blessing? A wonderful thing to know that if we do what God tells us to do, we can receive those promises that he has, uh, that he has made to us. And when God makes a promise, he always delivers. He's not like man. He won't let us down. He'll always do that which he promises. And so what a great blessing that we can study the Word of God. We can know where it came from. And we can study it and understand it and put it into practice in our lives. I challenge you to do that very thing. You might be seeing this on Facebook or YouTube and you might think to yourself, well, I never really thought about how we got the Bible and all the steps that it took to get down to us. But I tell you what, uh, I want to do what's right. If that's your attitude, reach out to me. Send me an email, BibleToter at Hotmail.com. Or 
call me, text me, uh, reach out to the elders here. We'll study with you. We'll pray for you. We'll do everything that we can to make sure that you understand what you need to know so that you can obey the gospel. And if you're a Christian, you need to come back through repentance and prayer, do that. There's no reason to be lost. God went through an awful lot of work, an awful lot of effort to make sure that we could have the truth today and that the truth could make us free. Jesus said in John 8 verse 32, Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What about the flip side of that coin? I think the flip side of that coin is if you don't know the truth, you're still in bondage. You're still in slavery to sin. And God doesn't want that. He wants to set you free. Thanks for joining us today for this short Bible study. I hope it's helped you in your understanding of how we got the truth and the steps in that, uh, in that, uh, in that process of the transmission of the truth down to us from God. We'll see you next time.